So in today's video, I am going to be previewing at Bradford City versus Grimsby Town. Then in the second part of today's video, I am going to be bringing you guys my Game Week 38 League 2 score predictions. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could turn it 70 likes on today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 7,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know your score predictions for this game week and what your starting eleven would be for this match as well. Obviously, we didn't have a game last week. Crew absolutely bottled it against us. So we haven't played since like the 20th, 21st of March, something like that, since that 0-0 draw at home to Carlisle. It feels like absolutely ages ago. So I'm looking forward to getting back, watching Bradford City play and fingers crossed they don't let us down on this occasion. There's eight big games to go for us. It might be eight, nine, something like that. Eight or nine games to go. I think it might be nine and everyone else has got eight to go. But either way, we need to, to now be performing. It, it, we cannot accept a, a draw against a mid-table team. we simply got to be going out to win our last remaining matches, every single one of them, and getting the job done. In our last eight or nine games, we've got to be winning five or six of them for automatics, if not seven of them potentially. And then if you want to be getting into the playoffs, I think we only need another three, I'd say, wins, maybe a couple of draws in there as well. But make sure to drop a like on today's video. Subscribe if you are new as well. And let's get into it. Starting out then with the current Skybet League 2 table. My team, Bradford City, we currently sit 7th in the table. After 37 games, we've got 16 wins, 13 draws, 8 defeats, 45 goals scored, 32 goals conceded, leaving us on a positive 13 goal difference and 61 points. Our last couple of matches then have been a draw, a draw, a draw, a draw and a win. Then last couple of matches have then been a nil nil draw at home to Carlisle United, a 2-2 draw at home to Hartlepool, a 1-1 draw away at Newport, a 0-0 draw away at Walsall and a 2-0 win at home to Colchester United. If we compare that then to Grimsby Town, they currently sit 15th in the Skybet League 2 table. After 37 matches, they've got 12 wins at 12 draws, 13 defeats, 39 goals scored at 43 goals conceded, which leaves them on a minus 4 goal difference and 48 points. The last couple of matches then, I mean a draw, a draw, a draw, a win and a win. So in terms of the last 5 matches, they are the team coming into this game with the better form. Grimsby's last couple of games then being a 1-1 draw away at Crawley Town on Tuesday, a 1-1 draw at home to Walsall on Saturday. So they've played two games, since uh, they've played three games actually since we last played because they played Mansfield on the Wednesday, the day after we played Carlisle. So there's absolutely no excuses about fatigue or anything like that in this one. Grimsby did draw 0-0 though away to Mansfield. They obviously had that 5-0 defeat away to Brighton and Hove Albion in the FA Cup quarterfinal. Big congratulations to them for getting to that stage. That is an absolutely unbelievable achievement. They also had a 1-0 win away at Sutton and a 1-0 win at home to Rochdale. And then they had a 1-1 draw, back to their 1-1 draws uh, just before that at home to Newport County. They do certainly love a 1-1 draw. You'll have to wait and see later on in today's video what my score prediction is going to be. But now we're going to get into the team though that I would go with if I was Mark Hughes. Now, normally, I do pick the team that I would go with if I was Mike Hughes the day after our last match. So, if I forget a reason why I've picked a player, then bear with me, because it has been a long time ago since our last game. But I've gone with a 5-2-3 formation, 3-4-3, whatever you want to call it. I just think we look a lot better with width and creativity, because when we're playing a diamond at home, we just don't really create enough, in my opinion. But in goal for me, obviously, it will be Harry Lewis, one of the best goalkeepers in the league. I expect him to make the team of the season as well. Been brilliant for us so far this season kept a clean sheet in his last game against Carlisle didn't really have too much to do but obviously he's our number one and he has to start in between the sticks into the back three then on the right side of the back three I would go with Matty Platt I thought he defensively again was decent against Carlisle I don't really think there are too many question marks over Matty Platt defensively my only questions over Platt are he's a little bit slow but he's not the slowest centre back that we've got and he's also his ability on the ball he's not great at playing out from the back whatsoever but he's better than some of our other options and I think as a right sided centre half that could suit him very well. In the centre of the back three I would go with Sam Stubbs. I think his composure a little bit has declined over the last couple of matches. He seems to be a little bit hesitant to bring the ball down and play. Instead, he's just putting it out into the stands, which I can understand at this stage in the season, you don't want to be making a mistake that costs you a goal and potentially could cost you promotion. So from that point of view, I do understand that it. it's just when a ball gets hooked into the channel, instead of him trying to shield it out or maybe playing a back pass to Lewis, he's constantly putting it into touch. That is something that I did notice against Carlisle, but he has been brilliant since coming in from Exeter in January. So I don't really have too many complaints about him whatsoever. On the left side, I would bring in 
in Romany Critch, though, we just look so much better defensively when he is there, but not pushing forward because as much as we all thought, oh, he's really good on the ball, let's not play him on the wing or playing his as attacking overlapping centre half because he can't really cross. He's passing in his own half, he's very good in the opposition half, not so great. So I don't want to see Critchlow playing at left back, but I think on the left side of a back three that could suit him very well. Into the two wing backs, then on the right side, I would go with Brad Halliday, being one of our better performers so far this season, although against Carlisle, I did think he was really poor in my opinion and hopefully we can see Halliday get back to his best in this one brilliant going forward I think he's our second or third top assister so far no he's actually our highest assister so far this season he's been brilliant overall just his last couple of games he has looked a little bit shaky at left wing back I would go with Alex Gilead he played there for a little bit against Carlisle because we were constantly changing formations and when he was playing there it suits Gilead really well because it's a role that you need to be energetic and all that sort of stuff in you know decent defensively okay going forward and I think that suits Gilead very well you know you're not going to get 10 goals 10 assists from Gilead I don't think he's got a goal contribution so far this season but he brings you the leadership he brings you energy and when he's competing with Talaji Bola and Liam Rydalg I think for me personally Gilead is our best left wing back that's not even his natural position into the two central midfielders then obviously Adam Clayton going to be out for a number of weeks with a hamstring injury apparently he felt it in the game against Carlisle played through it but then it was more the Wednesday where he was really feeling it and I think they went for some sort of a scanning that has come back unfortunately with a little bit of damage to his hamstring so that is a big blow for us but first I would go with Richie Small and I think he's getting better and better as games go by against Carlisle who's my man of the match if not him it probably would be Gilead but especially in that I think it was the first half where he was breaking up play he looked really really good and when he is breaking up play playing as a more defensive central midfielder that is his best role you know he's not great going forward even though he's got I think a second most amount of goal contribution I think it's three goals four assists this season I think overall for me Small has to start and I'd partner him with Emmanuel Osadibe now I know he's not played too much football recently and he has been out with injury but at home we need someone with his creativity in the midfield I'm a big fan of Ryan East but I haven't been impressed with him over the last few matches and I think Osadibe is better going forward there's no chance that he's going to get 90 minutes but even if he plays 60 65 minutes and you bring him off for another central midfielder then I think that could you know build him up very nicely because he's going to be key for our running and we need him to be, be able to be fit to play 90 minutes week in week out in the coming future moving in then into my front three on the right wing I would go with Scott Banks now against Carlisle he didn't really get involved in the game all too much put a couple of crosses into the box but really didn't create too much in my opinion but that's what you're going to see with league two wingers some games are going to look really good other games not going to really be involved all too much and I think you see that with wingers at every level really not just just at League 2 but because of the physicality if you're getting man marked out of the game which Banks pretty much was up by John Mellish she really did struggle then that is going to happen sometimes but we all know the, the quality that Banks has got you know goals assists brilliant football so I'd like to see him start once again on that right hand side on the left wing I would bring in Thierry Nevers now again it's similar to Emmanuel Osadibe has been out with injury recently and I don't expect him to be able to complete 90 minutes but I just need to see something a little bit different on the wing I, my eyes can't take another performance from Costello or even Harry Chapman. Both of them are just not good enough, especially Dara Costello. While he might be a young lad, you know, learning his trade and all that sort of stuff, he's not good enough at this moment in time. From what we've seen of Nevers, he looks to have a little bit of end product about him, but again, hasn't really featured all too much. He's been the odd 5-10 minutes off the bench. I think getting his first start, he signed in January and he's still not had a start for the club. So I'd like to see him start in this one and just anyone other than Costello and especially Chapman as well. Obviously, up front, that does leave Andy Cook. 25 goals for the big man this season, 22 in the league. The top goal scorer in the league can score goals out of nothing. Brilliant heading the ball, right foot, left foot, whatever you want. You can give it to him 16 foot in the air and he'll manage to bring it down and put it in at the back of the net it's not just his goals though he's hold up play bringing others into play we need players like Banks and Nevers if them two are to start in this formation then we need them to be in close to him give him some support or Sidibe pushing up from the midfield as well I personally think that is one of our better teams at this moment in time on the bench then that would leave Colin Doyle Kieran Kelly Talaji Bola Ryan East Jamie Walker Matt Derbyshire who should hopefully be back from his injury as well now and Vaden Oliver that does mean though the players who would miss out would be Heath Richardson at Luke Kendry Oscar Threlkeld who I actually thought was out for the season but in the inside training video Bradford City released the other day he was actually in that doing actual running with the, the group you know he wasn't training on his own so he must be back available but I can't see him getting in over Hendry or Halliday anytime soon also missing out then would be Odessina, Rydal, Clayton, Dion Pereira, Harry Chapman, Aboisa and Dara Costello now let's get into my game week 38 league two score predictions starting out then with the Friday night kickoffs at Stockport County versus Salford City a big playoff clash big one for the automatic promotion race as well with Stockport being the home 
home side though, I'm going to back them for a 2-1 home win. Tramia Rovers versus Harrogate Town is also being played on Friday night. Tramia obviously recently sacking Mickey Mellon as their manager. Harrogate, a little bit inconsistent and that is why they are struggling at this moment in time. I'm going to go Tramia Rovers 1, Harrogate Town 0. Into the early kickoff then on Saturday, Bradford City versus Grimsby Town. Grimsby love a 1-1 draw. We've not been great at all this season whatsoever so I'm going to go with Bradford City 1, Grimsby Town 1. AFC Wimbledon versus Rochdale AFC. Wimbledon recently beating Walsall I think on Tuesday night. Their first winning like 11 matches. Rochdale also recently sacking Jim Bentley. More than likely though they are going to wave the white flag very soon. I think it'll be AFC Wimbledon 1 at Rochdale AFC 0. Borough AFC versus Gillingham FC. I'm going to go with a 2-1 away win for the Jills. Colchester United versus Newport County. This one's got 0-0 written all over it. Doncaster Rovers versus Crew Alexandra. That is not going to be won as a neutral that you want to expect anything good out of from that game. I'm going to go Doncaster 0 at Crew 2. Hartlepool United versus Swindon Town. I'm actually going to go with a 2-1 home win for Hartlepool. Being very impressed with what I've seen from Hartlepool over the last couple of games. I think Swindon are there for the taking as well, in my opinion. Leighton Orient versus Carlisle United. A big game for the Autopathic Promotion race. I'm going to go Leighton Orient 2, Carlisle United 3. I think Carlisle will get back to winning ways, get the monkey off the bat that they're not scored in their last three matches and come up with a big win, high scoring win in that one. Mansfield Town versus Crawley Town. I'm just going to edge with the Stags in this one with them being the home side. I'm going to go Mansfield 2, Crawley 1. Northampton Town versus Stevenage FC. Again, another big top of the table clash. I think that's second versus third. I'm just going to edge Northampton though, again with them being the home side to get the job done with a 1-0 home win. And finally, Walsall FC. They're on a shocking run of form at this moment in time versus Sutton United. Sutton have the potential chance to make the playoffs this season, so I'm going to back them for a 2-0 away win. But that is where I'm going to leave it for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on their form. If you could try and hit 70 likes on today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road 7,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Let me know your score predictions and what your sign 11 would be for this match down in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Don't forget as well to check out the channel membership scheme if you haven't already. There's been loads of videos posted to tier 3 channel members recently so make sure to go check them out. And my second channel as well, the link to that is down in the description down below. We're trying to get a thousand subscribers over there so please make sure you go subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching though. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all very soon for another video. Peace.